Hello and welcome to another edition of Business PNG. Now, there's a construction boom in our major towns and cities. New business establishments, the emergence of hotels, motels and guest houses, and not to mention the development of accommodation units. Now that brings us to our topic, the real estate industry and the housing demand. In this first segment, Hannah Aria gives us an overview of the real estate market. Real estate in PNG has been a sector that's evolved through the years, crumbling for a period of time causing inconsistency and picking up pace at high speed in the last few years. In Port Moresby, the housing and commercial platforms are where the market is, and the increased demand for top-range apartments and housing is the likely result of new jobs that offer disposable incomes. A characteristic of the 8% plus jump in PNG's economic growth since 2011, Regarded as one of the most lucrative businesses in PNG today, it is seen as a widely favoured option for a viable investment in the current economy. So you're having, um, you're having a lot of new uh, flats, particularly the more premium end um, housing has gone up overlooking in uh, Port Moresby, overlooking Ella Beach, but also in uh, some of the other main centres in lay and places. You're getting these new premises. And it's only been this successful because housing was not at the top of the agenda for past PNG governments, giving pricing rights to property developers on a silver platter. And those prices are extremely high. According to the Oxford Business Group, both leading super funds have recorded all-time lows in their profit margins. Even the banks have chosen to tighten procedures in lending to construction and property developers. And economists are predicting a market correction by the banks, where a rapid change in standardized prices of market commodities, in this case the real estate industry, drops drastically to find a different business direction. Usually this occurs when barriers are removed, so the business environment is extremely conditional. The demand has, has peaked, although many businesses are saying um, Yes, there's a lot of business activity going on. It, we have to recognize that probably over the next uh, couple of years there'll be a bit of a, uh, a decline in business activity um, from the peak. So the, the big demand for some of that accommodation, uh, for that premium accommodation coming off, probably they will have to be accepting rentals at slipping down the 5,000, the 4,000, the 3,000 type mark. But the mere fact that companies engaged in the construction and property development sectors in PNG are large corporations with billion dollar stakes, the market will remain stable. Some of them have enabled local companies to become developers themselves. The dilemma is that the private sector, though rich in market value, is still incapable of meeting the high cost of labor and materials, trying to provide for that demand. It's been a struggle for the ever-changing government with the collapse of the National Housing Commission in the mid-90s. A consistent supply of public housing diminished, forcing workers to seek homes in settlements. The INA says the market right now is flat. And the rental rates are likely to slip. And although that's uh, not going to please all the landlords, or um, clearly it's going to be uh, an attractive scenario for, uh, for householders who haven't been able to afford premises uh, up till now. It's not going to probably slip that far, but we do know that the past experience in PNG has often been you've had big building booms and substantial inflation in, uh, in rentals and so on, and then it's leveled out for a period of time. Lay, it's probably um, still, still um, uh, at a peak and it probably hasn't leveled off as much as in, uh, in the national capital yet. There's a lot of business activity going on in, in Lay. Uh, every time, you know, if you, you just 
you've got the new road construction that's likely to occur over there and a number of other major infrastructure projects, the port upgrade going on, the uh, dual carriageway going out to the airport and beyond, all these sort of projects which are... Um, so, yes, Lay may, um, may continue for a while longer, but anyway, there's some levelling out and that's, that probably is desirable for ordinary people in Papua New Guinea. There will be a decline in business activity in the next few years. That's a line that is continually being used to describe the PNG business environment. And that's the reality PNG will be facing to an extent it will mean the departure of some business ventures and the entry of a government intervention mechanism. But it is also a bleak reminder of how much PNG lacks in skilled labor and locally manufactured products. Coming up next, the opinion of the business community and a look at the probable causes of the rise in rental rates. In Port Moresby, the demand for upmarket housing had tripled in the last four years and the business community says this may have been the cause of the rise in accommodation rates. The market in the premium end housing had forced the rates to be where they are now, the simple demand supply factor. Yes, the real estate industry is a thriving business at the moment, a major demand in the capital, Port Moresby. And with the niche in the residential and commercial space, the demand for upmarket housing has skyrocketed in the last couple of years, brought on by the introduction of new business ventures, more particularly the multi-billion Kina Gas project. I spoke to a couple of people to get a glimpse of the market scenario and the rates imposed. A phone interview with Carolyn Blacklock, International Finance Corporation's country representative, and the Port Mosby Chamber of Commerce and Industries, David Korn. The rest decided to stay anonymous. Well, first, it's a broad industry. I think the first thing I would say is that uh, when we talk about the real estate industry, we're talking about everything from home ownership and people... Um, wanting to buy a home, um, we're talking about people wanting to rent individuals and then we're moving into talking about small businesses and, and their challenges around finding suitable premises. We're talking about um, safety and security, so from a, from a point of view of securing property and then we're talking about commercial businesses and industrial where um, this is involving agriculture as well and, and the tenor of land and being able to access land securely to, to enable bank finance and those kinds of things. So when we're thinking about the real estate industry in Papua New Guinea, I guess my first, um, my first point would be that it's extremely diverse, like in every country, and in Papua New Guinea it has its own challenges to do with um, land tenure and customary land in particular. And, and the rightful use of that land. The, the costs of land, which I think we need to come back to because I think that's the key issue. Cost of building, the cost of doing business in Papua New Guinea, um, you know, the cost of your finance. These are all the things that dictate what the rentals are in Port Moresby. And, uh, you know, they've, they've been traditionally high. Um, uh, you know, and, and from a, a, you know, a strictly supply and demand uh, side, you know, the, the costs come down when there's sufficient supply. So clearly, uh, the, the, you know, and, and it puzzles us too. I mean, uh, yeah, certainly you look at hotel development in, Papua New, in Port Moresby, for example, and you're going, when are the prices of a room ever going to come down? You know, here we've got new hotels coming up. I mean, we've got, you know, the Holiday Inn, two towers coming on. Uh, uh, Rimbun and Hijau just broke ground on a 400 room hotel last week and you're going, gee, when's this market ever going to soften? And uh, I think the reality is that it's, it's got quite a way to go before it will soften. Uh. 
So the demand supply factor has been in place since, forcing the market to have reached unprecedented rates. First, the upmarket housing, reaching an average 3,000 per week in places such as downtown Port Moresby, and reaching lesser by half a thousand kina as one moved into the peripheries of the city. There's a perception that the sudden demand in the upmarket housing as opposed to the availability of low and medium cost housing has been the push factor on the high rates currently imposed. You know, I think the point that we're all concerned about and, I mean, uh, and, and, and we're getting mixed up on is that there is a tremendous shortage of low to medium cost housing in Papua New Guinea. Yeah. Now that... You know, let's be let's be frank. Um, I don't think big business is going to be getting into the market of low and medium cost housing. I mean, anecdotally around the world, that's not what they do. But it is what a government should do. So the, the call is the government's call, and you know they haven't been too good at it so far. Um, you know, the demand for reasonable, low cost, affordable housing in Port Moresby would have to be massive. But you know, I don't think there's money in it for a major developer, uh, especially when you see the cost of your land. And I think that is a critical issue too where, where the government needs to get involved. I mean, clearly I think uh, th there's no, no way to duck it, but there's been huge malfeasance in the Department of Lands over the years. Uh. So according to popular opinion of the business community, it seems PNG has an accommodation market of a wealthy developed country quite contrary to current state of things. And many say that in reality, it demonstrates a much undeveloped housing market unable to meet rapidly growing demand in most centers and categories of housing. When we look across the world in terms of the expensiveness of housing for our own self, Papua New Guinea is one of the most expensive. Um, it's not the, the top of the list, but it's certainly well up there with with other developed and some other developing countries that are going through quite rapid rises in real estate prices. And the person hit hard here by the high cost of living is the growing middle class. More stories on the real estate industry when we come back. If you've just joined us, we're featuring the real estate industry and the current state of housing in Papua New Guinea. Now, high rentals are being felt right across the board, from commercial right through to the domestic end. Here's a glimpse of the current scenario, a tangled one though. For a developing nation, business community representatives and foreign workers say Papua New Guinea may be ranked the most expensive places in the world. In actual fact, the Business Insider 2011 survey has placed Port Moresby City on the 13th spot out of 20 most expensive cities in the world. One can already imagine the implication this has on the growing middle class and the general population. High cost of goods and services, poor infrastructure and not to mention the high rental rates that's making it difficult to find a decent place in towns and cities. Um, well, certainly any of us who live in Port Moresby um, or in major cities of Papua New Guinea would, as individuals, I think, agree that it is a, an expensive, um, high-cost real estate environment. And one of my bosses, American bosses, told me that it is very expensive to live in Port Moresby than in New York City. So we, housing in Papua New Guinea, we have a terrible problem that requires the government to address immediately. Even the business class have been feeling the pinch it's a matter of controlled spending against revenue generation. There's a gold mine here in the city, in Port Moresby, and possibly in the other cities in Leigh and Hagar. There's a gold mine here that people are actively mining now, and it's land. And it's not open, it's not transparent. Uh, it's driving the price up, and I come back to the same old argument, once the price of land stays so high, how are you ever going to get reasonable housing? Uh? Cairns, situated at the northernmost tip of Australia, is strategizing itself as an operative base for multinational companies wanting to do business in Papua New Guinea. 
Kent International Airport, for instance, is undergoing major developments at a cost of about 15 million Australian dollars. This is to cater for customer demand as the route between Cairns and Port Moresby intensifies. It is a distribution port for the many small communities to the north of Cairns and mining ventures in Papua New Guinea and Indonesia. Cairns has been involved with PNG in terms of fly and fly out for probably 25 years. But with the resource sector uh, growing and developing as it has, um, and the close proximity to Cairns from PNG, that's allowed the, the FIFO fly and fly out market to dramatically increase. Some major resource projects happening in Papua New Guinea, which is really um, can play a really positive role in the development of Papua New Guinea. But obviously, there's some key challenges associated with those projects to do with, you know, for example, the cost of rent in Port Moresby and, and access to the locals being able to, to get into the housing market. So we see that we can play a role in effectively helping Papua New Guinea with that. And it's not just about the rental rates, but it's what a city can provide in terms of basic amenities. International Finance Corporation, the private sector lending arm of the World Bank Group, says there's more to creating a conducive investment environment. Cities around the world are developing brands and and you would imagine key competitive advantages, what attracts people to those cities. And I think what you're seeing happen in Cairns is quite a, a deliberate strategy by the local government which administers Cairns to develop Cairns as a, as a point for people to live, to um, fly in and fly out of mining sites, primarily in Australia. It is um, very much marketed as a place where people families can live, um, enjoy what Gans has to enjoy, if that's their sort of thing, and do that in a way in which they can um, you know, buy or, or rent accommodation. There is, there is quite a, a marketing plan around Cairns for that. So it doesn't surprise me that also Papua New Guinea companies, as they look to the needs of their workers, both Papua New Guinea and, and expatriate workers, that they would look for um, a place which really is only an hour and a half flight from most parts of Papua New Guinea. And back home, it's not as rosy as people would like to think of a resource-rich nation. Finding accommodation is hard enough. Trying to get a piece of land will cost an arm and a leg. There are numerous allegations of illegal land deals and bribery, and that's raised questions about the bureaucracy. A recent saga in the capital city has left many questions unanswered regarding public housing and there are now calls for an overhaul of the system. The National Housing Corporation, the organization and entity that was managed to provide affordable accommodation and regulate the real estate industry, they have to wake up from the slumber, from the deep sleep and come up with policies to one regulate the real estate industry so that the rates are affordable for common unions and two, they are supposed to develop them and provide affordable accommodation to Papua New Guineans. But it is what a government should do. So the, the call is the government's call. And, you know, they haven't been too good at it so far. Um, you know, the demand for reasonable, low-cost, affordable housing in Port Moresby would have to be massive. Um, but, you know, I don't think there's money in it for a major developer, uh, especially when you see the cost of your land. And I think that is a critical issue too, where where the government needs to get involved. I mean, clearly, I think uh, th there's no no way to duck it, but there's been huge malfeasance in the Department of Lands over the years. Uh, and, you know, and from a chamber point of view, we would think that is an area ripe for a full inquiry. Uh. And the sentiment is shared by most tenants in urban areas. From these complaints, it's anonymous that there should be some form of regulatory standards in the real estate industry, even more so for public housing. So far, the Independent Consumer and Competition Commission has put forth a submission to regulate the real estate industry that's currently before the Treasury Department. However, the problem is, this is a free market. There's a lot of talk about regulating the real estate market versus and uh, you know, I mean, I guess from a chamber point of view, the answer is always going to be from us that the, the market's dictating that. Uh, the factors in the market, um, you know, the, the costs of land, which I think we need to come back to because I think that's the key issue. 
cost of building, the cost of doing business in Papua New Guinea, um, you know, the cost of your finance. These are all the things that dictate what the rentals are in Port Moresby. And, and with all the downside, there's hopefully good news for the next two years. Find out on the other side of the break. What good news, you might ask? Well, the winding down of the LNG project means many of the contracted companies will up and leave. So it's predicted that the demand for the premium end housing will drop, causing the price to fall and the bargaining power be stored back on the tenants. On the flip side of the coin, it's predicted that real estate prices will drop by 2015 and it's projected that the table will turn where the negotiating power will be in the hands of the tenants and it's already starting. Yeah, but I've, I've heard uh, people looking for accommodation in town. I mean, one, one couple told me they, when they walked in the door, the vendor wanted 8,000 a week for the unit. Uh, and when they were about to walk out saying, no, no, we don't really like it, the price was coming down seven, five. You know, so by the time they walked out the door, you know, and you know, that's huge. But, you know, so people are getting desperate to rent some of these properties. So yeah, yeah, well, that's right. I mean, I mean the, the buyer's got power at the moment. The driving factor here is the fall in demand. The, the demand has fallen, and it's clearly, um, as we approach 2014, the final construction of the LNG plant, um, you know, I mean, I've, I'm hearing figures that, I mean, you know, the, the employment, I mean, once a plant's built, you don't need the 15,000 people have been building the plant. So... The big demand for some of that accommodation, uh, for that premium accommodation coming off, probably they will have to be accepting rentals at slipping down the 5,000, the 4,000, the 3,000 type mark for these, these flats, which will start making um, people who are living in, in less demanded uh, areas, maybe from Barocco or elsewhere, in, uh, to be able to try and get flats downtown and uh, with a sea view, for example. And, uh, and then people in Moresby from Tokarara and Garahu will want to try and pick up some of the flats that are in, in Barocco and, and that maybe then makes some availability for people then to move in from Nine Mile and, and further afield and try and find accommodation in, in Tokarara. And so, you know, it, it gives some opportunities. But obviously the demand out there is substantial. It was over a period of about four years when the prices showed up. The demand for upmarket housing was substantially high. But that chapter is coming to a close now that the gas project, the factor in the increase, nears completion. Say if you wanted a decent place, a self-contained unit at a reasonable price, the message here is to ride out the storm. And during the fallout, there will be casualties. The demand um, has fallen. The supply has stayed. And, you know, and some people will be caught. Those who are still building are going to be caught. And that, that, that's just property. I mean, property is, you know, around the world is boom or bust, yeah. However, the real estate industry is as unpredictable as the commodity prices. Today may be a sharp fall, and tomorrow may be otherwise. This uncertainty of housing prices and the fact that it's so expensive will mean that it will eventually flop. This is known as the real estate bubble. Other countries have gone through the same process, Japan in the 1990s, and in 2005 it was Shanghai, China. And it's predicted PNG will see this in two years' time. And that's been our edition of Business PNG. To view this program online, follow the website address now shown on your screen. And for more information about the program or queries and suggestions you'd like to share with us, do send them through to businesspng at mtv.com.pg. I'm Festus Maiganap. Enjoy the rest of your day.